down, uh, you've got a release which is uh, formed of a couple of sprints. And uh, those sprints are anywhere between two to three weeks long. I uh, do a lot of side projects, so my sprints I try to keep three weeks long um, okay. because I'm usually usually doing part-time work, maybe an hour or two a day. And uh, trying to break into the industry can be really tough, so I always try to do about three week sprints for that. Kind of pace yourself along the way. Exactly, and that allows my team to have um, a fair amount of leeway. And if you can see, you know, this is a really cool feature for looking at a sprint at a typical sprint, you can see between uh, 9.1 and 9.5, we did absolutely zero work. Yeah. So um, having those three weeks really helps you take a look at uh, how you're doing and executing against your tasks and say, oh gosh, it's 9.5, I really need to execute some work. So it looks like on 9.5, we got a fair amount done and yeah. uh, we're back on track again. A great way to track progress and make sure that, again, everyone's on the same page, we're constantly communicating, and uh, so it doesn't just fall on the hands of one person. Instead, it's the entire team who's commonly looking at this board to make sure that they're, they're all working on the same projects at the same time. Exactly. And uh, when we want to do these stand-up meetings, the first thing that we'll do is we'll all get together online. We'll use uh, Link Online or Skype or some sort of tool like that. Yeah. And we'll pull up this board that you can see on my screen. And you can see that I've got a couple of uh, backlog items. I've got, we've got build the main character assets. We've got to design the input. And then we actually have to go and build this input. And you can see um, we've got about 21 hours to do. Uh, the in progress is kind of scary right now. We don't have anything in progress probably yeah. because we're out here recording. Yeah. Um, and then on the done, you can see what we've completed in this sprint. So this first meeting will come in each day and we'll say, okay, what do you got to do? What's done? What's in progress? What's your status? Do you rely on anything that I've got going on? Okay, basically dependencies. Exactly. So um, one of these guys are in, he's uh, one of my friends that's working on this project with me. He's going to be doing a lot of the art assets. Um, but we ended up having to uh, reallocate drawing the main character. So he's going to be blocked on smooth moves. So when we go and uh, have these actual discussions, okay. he's supposed to do the animation, but the main character hasn't been drawn. So these are the meetings where you discover those kinds of problems. Right, this way you can kind of uh, uh, stop, stop it before it becomes a problem, right? You can say, I've noticed you haven't worked on this in a couple of days, so should I be working on something else in the meantime? Exactly, and it helps you really tune your resource allocation. Um, that's definitely very critical. Um, so that's kind of the uh, overview of what the board looks like. Um, let me get to the correct slide deck presentation here. Okay. So, I mean, it sounds like this could save people a lot of trouble um, just by being organized with these projects, a lot of communication back and forth. And, and how do we get these board items on there? Are these things that you and I are both agreeing on at the same time, or? Uh, so that's actually the next topic. So uh, what we want to talk about next is uh, actually putting items onto this board. Uh, we've got features, product backlog items, tasks, timelines, team capacity, burn down. We've said a lot of these words already, but let's start talking about what some of these actually are and uh, put some of these in here. There's some new features. This is a brand new game that I'm working on, so there's a lot of features that need to be added. So, you know, we're going to do all this live here. Um, so, let's start by talking about what is a feature. Um, a feature could be I've got a slow time component to my game. Uh, this particular game has a slow time. It's really, really buggy. So I haven't actually added it as a feature onto this game yet. And there's a okay. lot of components that make up this uh, slow time feature. There's graphical components. There's code components. There's management components. Those would all be uh, product backlog items. So um, I could say that the uh, time bar for, you know, we, when we click the slow time button, yep. that's going to start a timer and the bar is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, there's art assets and there's coding that goes into that. Okay. So the time bar would be the product backlog item. And the task itself would be somebody's got to draw the time bar. Right. Somebody's got to code the time bar. Somebody's got to put the time bar into the game. And then they got to put it in all the levels. So. Okay. Uh, that would be the actual individual tasks. So a, a term I commonly hear for this is something like a story. How would you relate a story to a feature? So a story would be like, as a user, I want to do whatever. As a user, I want to be able to slow time in my game. So okay. I map features directly to stories, and then I break those stories down into product backlog items and tasks. Perfect. So to actually go about doing this, we're going to switch the screen back over to this board, 
and we're going to click on this little button here that says features at the top. So when we click on this and we see all the features, we can see I've got a main character and I've got input for the game. This is kind of pretty lame. broad. Yeah, pretty broad for the uh, features. Um, Sounds like we have to break it down into smaller things at some point. Exactly. So we're going to click on the backlog and uh, make sure that you're on this backlog view and you want this view here to show features. This will give you a little field right here under new mm -hmm. type of feature and you can just go ahead and type a title. So we talked about slow time in, uh, for our game. So we're just going to go ahead and say slow time. This is going to be our new feature. We're going to click add. Yep. And it's going to show up automatically onto this little list down here. This shows us all the features in my game. So if I double click this, I can get more information about this. Who is actually going to be responsible for this feature? Okay. Um, I don't like being responsible for things, so I'm going to give it to, mis to you. Perfect. Mr. Dave Voiles. And I think this needs to be completed. Remember, we were talking about releases and sprints? Yes. Uh, on the current iteration, you can see our project is Jack Round. Okay. We're in release one because this is a brand new project. We're going to push out our first release. We're actually in the initial sprint of this project. Mm -hmm. uh, I think slow time is a big uh, priority for us. We're going to put that as priority one. All right. Yeah, we don't want to fall behind at this point. No, we're already pretty far behind from the looks of it. Yeah. So, I'll go ahead and click Save. So that's going to have our feature in there, but it's not going to show up on our board yet. We need to actually make sure that this shows up on our board. And there's a little button here that says New Linked Work Item. Mm. Um, so we talked about having these product backlog items that map to it. Um, so I think we need to have a new product backlog item for the art assets for our game. Okay. So we click that little button. It says we're going to create a new child of feature. So link type uh, child. And uh, we're going to change this from task to product backlog item. Okay. And we're going to set this to art assets for slow time. Okay. And uh, comment, we're going to need, um, well, we need a time bar. We need some uh, cool filler and some animations. So if, this we're, is, if we're going to tie this back to Unity, I guess you could say this is almost like having components attached to our game object. Yeah, you could say that. This could be multiple game objects that need to get created. You could have multiple prefabs, um, the art assets. Yeah. I'd probably create a whole nother uh, product backlog item for uh, tying it all together. That mm -hmm. might be a task, but uh, bringing it into the game itself might warrant a whole product backlog item. Okay. So art assets for slow time. This probably won't be you. I, I don't really trust your art skills. I'm a programmer. I wouldn't trust them either. Um, I'm going to give this to RN since he's our uh, resident uh, artist and animator. Yeah. So um, one of the really important things to tell him about this is when I assign a product backlog item to one of my um, one of the people on my studio, I need to give them a little bit more of a description. They're going to end up being responsible for a lot of their own tasks, especially if it's going to the art department. I might just give an art asset assignment over to whoever's responsible for the art and let them break down the task. I have no idea what art assets are going to go into that. Right. I'm going to give them a direction. I'm going to say, make it disco-ish because it's a disco type game. Mm -hmm. You know, we need a uh, border. We need a filler. Um, some animations might be cool, and uh, a few particle effects. And okay. I'm just going to let that go off to them and let them come up with their concepts. Yeah. And they'll come back to me with some concepts, and we'll kind of break it out from there. And then our next day, we'll have a meeting about it or stand up where we're talking about the board. And Perfect. I'll say, yeah, we went through this, and we're going to allocate some more stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of communication, a lot of back and forth. Exactly. So we'll go ahead and save that. And uh, for a minute, I'm going to pretend that I'm RN. You know, I'm going to come and I'm going to look at this. And uh, let's just close all of these out and go to our backlog items. Okay. And I'm going to see art assets for slow time. I'll be able to see this uh, when I'm looking. I'll click on this and say, hey, that's new. What's going on here? Oh, this is assigned to me. I should probably do something with this. Um, so he'll go ahead and uh, click the new linked work item and start adding some tasks. So the first thing, I think this is really important, is just 
research and read. Yeah. That's going to be my number one. If I don't know what's really going on, I'm going to start assigning tasks to myself for research and read about it. Um, he says, what is a disco? Um, RN, I don't know if you know about him, but he doesn't speak uh, English too well. Okay. And uh, he'll come to me and say, what's a disco? And uh, I have to explain to him, like, oh, you got the disco balls and the right, lights right. and the, the music, the music and, and the groove and going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad you decided to point out um, research and read because uh, I'm sure you've seen this before. People will uh, often not allocate time to doing their research in the background, right? So you don't want your boss to think you're idle or you're not doing something, but in fact you are trying to get up to speed, make sure you are all on the same page. Yeah. A lot of times what'll happen when you're uh, creating a project is that you'll just go in and you'll type out, oh, we just need particle effects and it needs just to look like a disco. Effects. Yeah. And you say, well, what kind of particle effects? Right. You know, uh, how many particle effects? Or you may not be or, familiar with the tool or the asset yeah. or the extension that you're using at that point. Yeah. Do we? Would it make more sense to buy particle effects, perhaps? Maybe we should look to see what particle effects are out there. You know, that Cartoon FX2 out yeah. there was on sale for $5 the other day. Other day on the asset store. Particle playground, I use that pretty commonly. Exactly. So, you know that, that's a very good point. You know, maybe our our time is better spent researching uh, better assets or tools to use instead of writing our own. Exactly. So um, if we take a look back at my screen, what it'll do is probably say, well, that's going to be about two hours, and we're going to go ahead and save and close that. Notice that our iteration is still jack round, release one, sprint one. So when we close this out and we go take a look at the board, and we click on Sprint 1. Okay. We'll go see that uh, RN down here, he has build main character assets. There's design input, build input, but now we have art assets for slow time. Hmm. Research and read assigned to RN. Okay. So he can go and he can say, okay, well, we're going to mark that as in progress during our meeting. Yep. Um, once that's going to be completed, He's going to go and he's going to mark that as done. Okay, and I see in the top right corner there. Can you highlight that real quick where it says September ah, 1st? Our burn down. Yes. This is, so we talked about this a little bit more. Uh, when you create these uh, tasks and these work items, they're going to go into this. So that two that we allocated, I uh, have started doing actual hours. You can do pizzas, you can do shirt sizes. This actually operates off of a number. You can see that. For the entire sprint, we have about 40 work hours allocated right. for And this. our sprint is from the 1st on the bottom left corner there over to the 19th. Exactly. Correct? So by the 19th, we should be done with this sprint. Yes. Um, I also like to think of a sprint as an entire uh, section, almost like a deliverable that I can showcase to whoever my uh, managers are or whoever my client or funding client. or something. Exactly. If I got angel funding, that's I'm going to show them this. I'm going to say, look, we're perfectly on time. Right. And then they can go and dive in and look and see uh, what's going on. It's a great visibility tool. Especially for like building confidence uh, for a team or a product itself. Exactly. Um, so that's going to be the burn down chart. And it's going to relate directly to what we have on the screen as far as uh, the board and uh, how many hours we have allocated. Something else that we'll do in these uh, stand-up meetings is um, once he's marked this as done the day before, okay. we'll go back in and say, okay, well, we did some research, we did some reading, and it turns out that you need to design some new input because you know your input mechanism is just not up to par with what we want to do. Right. So I'm going to cancel this out real quick so we can uh, see it. There's this little green button next to this product backlog item. You can click that from within your board and instantly add a new one. If you look at this links, its parent is going to be the design input. And Ruman could have come back and told me during this meeting saying, hey man, you really need to design some new input. We need a slow time button. We can't slow time if we don't have a button for right. slowing time. So who's programming so, our inputs, right? We have to speak to that person as well. Exactly. So we're going to go and say, you need to build button. Uh, and we'll probably say build slow time button. Okay, be a little more descriptive. Exactly. And um, I'll just say do work to build button. And this is just open to anybody at this point. Yeah, so this one not assigned to anybody. Um, this is usually my work area, so I'll go ahead and assign that to myself. We'll save and close that. And when I get back, um, probably next week, I'll go look at that and start building the slow time button. Right, and I can see in the bottom right corner there of that actual item, it has the person who's actually assigned to it. Exactly. Great visibility for seeing who on your team is doing some work and who's not doing some work. Okay. Um, 
some other really good things to look at are this capacity. Um, you know, a lot of times this is, you'll go in and you'll start building this project and you've got this fantastic idea. You want to yeah. make like the next MMORPG. You want to have 50 swords.